Hi, I'm Angel Varela from Thermo Fisher Scientific Cell Culture R&D. Today I will be presenting an overview of our serum replacement supplement CTS Immune Cellisar and a case study performed at the University of Pennsylvania where the researchers compare CTS Immune Cellisar versus Human AB Serum for the production of CAR-19. This is a general overview of a workflow for autologous T-cell therapy manufacturing. It involves four steps. Obtaining a sample from the patient, a selection step to isolate the T-cells, a culture step where cells are expanded and engineered if needed, and finally, the cells are infused back into the patient. Most processes to manufacture T-cell therapies were developed in academia. Due to this, the cell culture processes were not optimized for commercial scale manufacturing. One of the major challenges for commercial scale-up of T-cell immunotherapy is the use of serum as a medium supplement. Key opinion leaders have singled out serum use as a source of variability and high cost for commercial manufacturing. Minimizing variability is a major goal in establishing robust manufacturing processes. A defined cell culture system can help to develop a robust process that is amenable to automation, enabling statistical process control, and leading to a greater product characterization. Serum as a component in cell culture media becomes an impediment in process development. You have lot-to-lot -lot variability, biosafety concerns, and supply chain concerns since there's really not enough of it to support all cell therapies in development. Consider this study in the right. We tested six lots of human AB serum and compared them to a qualified serum lot for T-cell expansion and lentiviral transduction efficiency. We obtain a wide variability between the tested lots in cell yields and transduction with little correlation with, between the two parameters. These results help to highlight the challenges of using serum in commercial manufacturing process development. Thermo Fisher Scientific has developed a defined serum replacement supplement that can replace human or fetal bovine serum in T-cell culture workflows. The product is Sino-free, CGMP manufactured with a scalable process and is pre-qualified using functional T-cell assay which helps ensure acceptable performance with every lot. QC specifications also include contamination testing, such as mycoplasma, endotoxin, sterility, and donor lever virus testing. This product provides multiple benefits to the end user. It is scalably manufactured to CGMP standards for security of supply. As a defined formulation, it provides consistent and flexible performance, being able to substitute human serum in multiple base media with no need to pre-qualify lots. It offers the peace of mind that every lot is tested on primary human T cells, and is regulatory friendly by offering full traceability and drug master file. These benefits were shown in a recent peer review publication seen below. We wanted to test CTS immune cellisar in an in vivo model of immunotherapy. We team up with our collaborators at the Ridley Laboratory at the University of Pennsylvania to evaluate the performance of CAR-19 cells grown in CTS immune cellisar versus those grown in human AB serum. They have an established in vivo model of leukemia where they are able to measure tumor burden over time, efficacy of treatment, and survival of the mice groups. Also, Prior to the in vivo study, they compared the expansion, transduction, and phenotype of the cells in both conditions. Data from three independent experiments showed comparable expansion of CAR-19 cells in vitro when grown in human AB serum or immune cellisar. These cells also showed comparable transduction efficiencies as shown in the bottom right of the slide. The phenotype of the T cells was also comparable, showing similar expression patterns for markers such as C62L, CD27, and CCR7.
The cytotoxic capacity of the T-cells was also similar when compared to controls in an 18-hour cytotoxicity assay. After establishing that the cells behave the same when grown in human serum supplemented medium versus immune cell SR supplemented medium, the cells were cryopreserved. We proceeded to use the UPenn leukemia model in immunodeficient NSG mice to determine differences in efficacy between CART-19 cells grown in medium supplemented with immune cell SR versus human AB serum. NSG mice were injected with 1 million luciferase expressing non-6 leukemia cells. After establishment of leukemia for seven days, mice were imaged and randomized for treatment with the indicated T-cell populations at 10 million T-cells per mouse. We use untransduced T-cells as a negative control. As you see on the left panel, the day minus one uh, figure represents tumor burden before T-cell infusion. Seen at day 13, CAR T-cells were able to control leukemia after infusion, while the negative control group of mice succumbed to leukemia. What was interesting and notable is that immune cell SR grown CAR T cells control leukemia in five out of six mice by day 49, while serum grown CAR T cells failed to control leukemia by, by the same time. This difference in potency was correlated with a better engraftment of the infused cells grown in immune cell SR and longer persistence in vivo when compared to cells grown in human AB serum, as shown on the bottom panel. This differences in efficacy translated to a better survival of the mouse group treated with CAR-19 cells grown in immune cell SR, as shown here in the survival plot. In conclusion, this data shows that T-cell expansion in CTS immune cell SR results in similar T-cell yields phenotype and effector function in vitro when compared to T-cells grown in medium supplemented with human AB serum. Interestingly, in vivo, we saw differences in engraftment that correlated with efficacy. Namely, T-cells grown in immune cell SR engrafted better and persisted longer than T-cells grown in media supplemented with human AB serum. This improved engraftment and persistence correlated with a more durable tumor control. A big thank you goes to Jim Riley and his team at the Translational Re Research Program at the University of Pennsylvania for performing the work on CART-19 that I show today as a case study. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.